Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Can you all rise up to our feet this morning? God is good. Amen. Amen. Let's lift up our hands to the King of Kings and we'll pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day that you added in our life, Lord. We've come here to worship you, to lift your name on high and to exalt you, Lord. And so we pray, Father, this morning, would you come and fill us, Lord, with your spirit and your anointing, O oh God. As we sing these songs, set us free, O oh God, Father. It's all about you. It's not about us. The songs that we sing, the word that we share, it's all about you. It's all about your power at work. And so we yield ourselves to you. We say, Lord, have your way in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand of praise this morning? Amen. He's worthy. How many of you believe that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's declare it out together and bless His holy name.
and miracles Lord there are times and seasons in our life where we have to wait we pray for certain things and it just doesn't happen but whatever the Lord does he does it on purpose how many of you believe that amen he's not a God of coincidences it's not by coincidence that the sea split it's not by the coincidence that the water came from the rock it's not by coincidence that Jesus died on the cross he did it all on purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If Hannah had to wait, it was for a nation to receive a prophet. He was doing it all on purpose so that Hannah would come to a point and say, Lord, when you bless me, I would give this son of mine to be yours forever and ever and ever. And maybe some of us this morning are here in a season of waiting. We've been praying. We've been asking God. But nothing is happening. But I want to, I want to, I want to remind you from His Word that He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah! And all things are possible with Him. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. So we're going to declare this song. It might be new for most of you, but declare it with all of your heart. It's got a very simple melody, and this is a new season that we are entering in. You know, in just few more weeks, we are going to enter a new year, right? But can I tell you a secret? God doesn't work with our calendars. He has his own calendar. He has his own timings. And we can trust in his timing. Hallelujah. We can trust him in every season. Whether it is a season of dryness, he will still provide. Whether it is a season of abundance, he has still provided. Hallelujah. And so let's declare it out together. That there is miracle after miracle, open door after open door. And all we got to do today is anticipate and ask him, God, do this in my life. How many of you want to do that? Amen. If you really want to ask him, lift up your hands and say, God, I pray for an open door in my life. I pray for a miracle in my life, Lord, today. Do it in my life once again. Sing it together. You do everything on purpose. I can feel your spirit stirring. And I've been waiting, you've been working, working it all for you. So find the flame. Finding in the furnace It's all the waiting will be worth it Cause you're working it all for good Miracles after miracles Open doors after open door. Here it comes, so get ready for another one Cause another one is on the way Miracle after miracle Open doors after open door Here it comes, so get ready for another one Cause another one is on the way Yes, another one is on the way Rushing wind and living 
and again He she will do it again and again Yes, she will do it again and again and again Yes, she will do it again
Come on, sing it out. Your name is light. We carry strong, Lord. Shine through the shadows. Come on, everyone, every single person lifting up your voice and sing your name. Your name is power. Your name is that we have is of you till everything that we have is of you in this new season of life while God opens doors for us may he find us ready may he find us expecting and one of the one of the a lot of times we think that it's the sin that would keep us away from God. Yes, there's a truth in that. But there are times when our good works, the things that we do and the things that we boast about and the things that we feel so good about, it's actually even those things that can keep us away from God. For the Gentiles, it was always that they were sinners and so they always thought, how do we attain righteousness? But for the Jewish people, they always thought, we are righteous. We are following the law. We are doing everything we can. And it is to them that Paul writes and says, I've done everything. I've followed the law. But I count my righteousness. And this is exactly the word he uses. I count my righteousness as garbage before the righteousness of Jesus. And the righteousness that we need today is the righteousness of Jesus that He can give us. We might have heard in our Sunday school, we might have heard when the gospel was shared to us that Jesus took your sins on the cross. How many of you have heard that? Yeah. But often we don't hear the second part that comes after that. He's taken your sins on the cross and now He gives His righteousness to you so that you can live His life. There's, a, there's an exchange that happened on the cross. He just didn't take our sins, but He gave us His life. He gave us His righteousness. And that's why through His Spirit, we can call Abba Father. Through His Spirit, we can boldly approach. By His blood, we can boldly approach and say, Abba Father. And this morning, we got to ask God, God, are there any things in my life that's keeping me away from You? Maybe it's not sin, maybe it's not addiction, but maybe it's those thoughts that I'm really good at this, or I've done great, or I've done this and I've done that. Because we are saved by grace and not good works. But we do good because of the grace He has shown to us. Hallelujah. And so let's declare today that God, there might be areas in my life that I need to be crushed, that I need to be pressed. Do it, Lord so that you would bring new things out of me. Because when God is pouring new things in our life, if our wine skin is still old, we will not be able to take it. And so let's ask God this morning, would you give me a new wine skin? Would you make my life new? Would you make my mind new? So that when you pour, I would be able to receive it. I would be able to receive it. Let that be a prayer today. the crushing 
in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground can we sing again in the crushing in the crushing in the pressing you are making new wine in the soil I now surrender you are breaking new ground so I yield to you into your careful hands when I trust you I don't need to understand make me a vessel make me an offering make me whatever you want me to be Lord I came here with nothing but all you have given me Jesus bring new wine out of me yes Jesus bring new wine out of me in the crushing in the pressing you are making the soil I now surrender you are breaking your crown and I believe you are breaking your crown so make make me a vessel and make me an offering church we didn't tell him where there's new wine where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here I lay down my old place to carry your new Where there is new wine, there is new power, and there is new freedom. The kingdom is here. I lead on my old place to carry your new fire again. Where there is where there is new. There is new power, there is 
Lord, I came here with nothing, but all you have given me, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Jesus, bring new Father, we lay down our old flames this morning. We lay down our dependence on the things we did at the past, the good things that we did in the past. And we rely on you. We lay down those old flames, those old victories, those old achievements. Father, teach us not to say good old days because you're a God of today. Every day you've made to be beautiful. And so Lord, when we look to our past, may we always say, there is new wine today. There is new grace today. There's new mercy today. Your mercies are new every morning. We don't have to say good old days. No. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And so we rejoice in you, Father. We rejoice in you, Father. This morning, let's just lift up our hands. God is pouring His joy in our midst this morning. He wants to bring laughter in few people's lives. You're, you know, there's some of us here this morning who's, who don't have a reason to laugh, who don't have a reason to smile. Just so broken, your life has been too hard on you the people around you have been too hard on you there's so much of expectation from you but today Jesus is calling you like Martha, Martha come don't be worried or don't be distracted with too many things I don't need anything I want you I want you He's bringing, his, his spirit is calling you back. He's saying, I will bring the joy back in your life. I will bring the joy back in your life. You will laugh once again over your situations, over your conditions, over the things that you're going through. You laugh about it. And you would never say good old days because I'm a God of yesterday, today and forever. I'm always working. I'm always working. I'm always working. So this morning we got to pray for a few people. They've given prayer requests and 
as i read out the names i want you all to lift up your hands and pray for them we're going to pray for sister esther we're going to pray for sister jemima we're going to pray for sister ritika sister debi sister amal sundari sister tamil rasi jaba sundari can we just pray for all of them and there's one of the believers um who's going through a very difficult time in 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 his uh, financially and and let's pray that god would intervene and help let's lift up our hands and pray for all these people that god would you touch them god would you heal them they are looking up to you jesus and so on their behalf we pray the church prays oh lord father and we ask you would you comfort them and heal them restore them lord father restore their health back oh lord jesus give strength in their bones and their body give strength oh lord once again come on church let's open up our mouth and begin to pray give strength oh lord give strength oh lord we speak the name of jesus over them we speak the name of jesus over them we speak healing restoration we speak healing and restoration lord thank you father thank you we believe that you answered our prayers lord we believe that you answered our prayers lord this morning as a church as a community we pray help us to realize the power of the kingdom of god we don't want to be people who have the form but not the power we don't want to be people only of, about talks but we want to be people who have the power of god the kingdom of god is here in our midst so pour new things in our life lord pour new things in our life is where there is new wine there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here i lay down my old flame to carry your new fire again and where there is new wine and there is new power there is new freedom the kingdom is here i lay down my old flames to carry your new fire i lay down my old flames to carry your new fire i lay down my old flames to carry your new fire down everything of the old and we ask you lord fill us with new we yield to you we submit to you in jesus name we pray amen would you give the lord a hand of praise this morning hallelujah you may be seated attention young people do you have a burden for the lost we know your heart for evangelism join us for the youth village outreach on november 24th for more details call Double nine four double zero six seven two six one. Do you believe God answers prayers? We invite every woman to join us every Wednesday at ten thirty a.m. on Zoom for prayer. For more details, please visit our help desk or contact Sister Tabitha at nine zero two five three one double three zero five. This month's prayer guide is about the power of words. Let's discover. how words rooted in god's truth can inspire and uplift get your hard copy from anasha or download it at bit.ly/nlagcpg baptism is god's commandment and a powerful way to publicly declare your commitment to jesus take the next step in your faith by joining our baptism classes every sunday to learn more speak with the leader or visit the help desk today We are here to support godly marriages and Christ-centered families. Visit our marriage bureau on Saturdays and Mondays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. or contact our help desk for more details. For more details, 
latest updates and for online giving log on to bit.ly/nlag community as given to the lord at this moment request ashish to take up the offering Father please come down and meet us we are waiting for your touch open up the heavens shower down your presence we respond to your great love we won't be satisfied with any
Father, we enter into your throne, into your throne room and we ask. This morning, there's a passage of scripture I want to read. Hebrews in chapter 10. The word of God says that we can enter into his throne room boldly. We can enter into his throne room boldly because he has opened up. In the Old Testament, you could not enter into the Holy of Holies. Once a year, the high priest could go and enter once with so much of fear. But the Shekinah glory is available for us this morning. Because on the cross of Calvary, 2,000 years ago, Jesus died. And he ripped open the screen that divides the Holy of Holies from all of us. And today we can enter into his throne room of grace boldly. That's what we're going to hear from God's word this morning. But before that, we're going to have a... Uh, dedication of a child so I want you to be seated I want the musicians would you come back is that okay or can you wait because one of our musicians son is going to be dedicated so can we ask David Bella would you please bring the child we're going to dedicate Luke Ezra David for the glory of God amen How many of you believe children are a blessing from God? Amen. Children are a blessing from God. And I do not know today has been a day when I'm dedicating uh, children of those parents. At least David, I've seen him as a small little child um, growing and running around. And and uh, all this is to say that I'm becoming old. Huh? But... What a joy, what a blessing to see David and Bella, to be part of your marriage and to see how God has blessed you with his beautiful son. Amen. What a blessing. So David and Bella, do you believe with all of your heart that God has given this child as a gift from heaven? Do you believe that you have a responsibility to shape this child's life? And God amongst all of the entire universe, when he chose who these parents need to be for his life he chose you and so it's a privilege so may you live good life may you shape the gospel through your life David don't exasperate him lead him lovingly kindly through your life through words by spending time with him may God help you shape his life for the glory of God Amen so can we as a, as a congregation lift up our, our hands towards Luke, Ezra, David and pray together. Amen, everyone. All family members and those who are part of, of this family, wherever you are, would you please stand up to your feet and... Uh, we just want to thank uh, God for for uh, uh, for David's family because uh, and for Bella's family. Uh, David's family have been part of this church for a very 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 long time. In fact, when the English service started out in 1984, right from that time, Sushilaka has been part of the church and uh, Joanne works with uh, with us in the church. And so it's a blessing to have all of you being part of this wonderful service okay so let's lift up our hands and we're going to pray and dedicate um, dedicate Jesus Luke Ezra father we thank you for Luke Ezra you have ordained our father Luke to be a man after your own heart I pray Luke will accomplish your father what you have assigned for him every everything that has been written about Luke's life will come to pass 
may he rise up a father and may he document things in the church a father so that generations to come will follow your ways and i pray our father let him be an ezra who would lord meditate on your scriptures and read out scriptures for the people to turn to your ways i pray and dedicate luz ezra for the glory of god and we dedicate him in the name of the father son and the holy spirit may you rise up may the spirit within you be stirred may every form of nominalism that sets in with the third to the fourth generation be out of you may there be a revival within you may you be a revivalist may you come and shake the churches and bring them back to the saving knowledge and the grace and the presence of Jesus so we dedicate him and we bless him in Jesus name How many of you believe that we have a good, good father? Amen. He's a good, good father. Turn to someone and say, "He, a, a father, is a good, good father." Amen. Let's sing this song together. Let's go into the Word of God this morning. This morning, the Spirit of God really wants only one thing. Huh? Hey, why are you not asking me? You know, the question that the Spirit wants to ask the church is like. Why are you not asking me? Am I mute that I cannot speak? Am I deaf that I can't hear you? Why don't you ask me? Cuz I have ripped open and given you the access to come into my throne room and ask. And then for this morning the whole when I I I wish I didn't have to preach for 35 minutes because this is the sermon. Just ask. just ask okay tell us someone say just ask just ask hey, if all that the spirit of god is asking is like why are you so silent why are you feeling so lost why are you not asking me just ask right just ask because we have a good good father how do you lift up your hands and, and just bask in his presence and allow the spirit of god to speak because he wants to speak to you more than what i can speak there are certain aspects that i can do uh, this morning and certain things that i can speak this morning but the spirit wants to speak to you more than what i can speak i'm so limited but the spirit can speak and deposit into your spirit certain things that i can't so would you open up your hearts and open up your mind because he's moving this morning searching for answers far and wide but i know we're all searching for answers only you provide cause you know just what we need before we say one together it's who i am it's who i am you're a good good father it's who you are everybody together it's who you are it's who you are i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am, it's who I am. perfect in all of your ways to us you're perfect you are perfect in all of your ways would you lift up your hands and declare you together perfect in all of your ways oh 
you're perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us. Lift up your hands and declare. You're a good, good father. So you are. Our father. So you are. Our father. So you are. Our father. Would you lift up your hands and call him Abba? Abba. So I am. Papa, Papa, Father, Abba, call him, he will answer you. Call unto me on the day of trouble, and I will answer you. I will reveal unto you hidden treasures hidden treasures the things that you don't know I will reveal because I am a God of revelation I know the past I know your present and I know your future ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find knock and the doors will be opened once again and therefore don't hesitate just ask and so this morning, I want you to know that God, when you ask, answers in four different ways. And the first way He answers is yes. He says yes. Simple. Every time He says yes, we are always joyful, right? There are many times when we have asked and God said yes. Superb. And there are times that He says no. It's tough for us to accept that, those answers, but, but we know that his no is because he loves us. His no is because he wants the best for us. Or the no is because there are many things that he is considering. And his no is best. His yes is best. His no is best. And then he says, wait. There are times he says, wait, because this is not a time. Because this is not a season. This is not it. You are actually wanting certain things ahead of time. Because there are certain things that you do ahead of time. And if you had been given certain things ahead of time, I, I explained this very well. Uh, when, when like two years, three years, Nathan, my son, he's 18 now. Nathan, my son, two years, three years. Whenever electricity used to go off and uh, his mother would go to the kitchen to get the candles and then uh, she would actually put on the, the stove or take a matchbox and light that light and then light up those candles. He would just go into a, a tantrum wanting to actually handle fire. And at two or three years old, me as a father would not allow him to handle fire. In the right sense, the right father would not allow a son who is two years, three years to handle fire. But today, when electricity goes and he does not move from his sofa and go and do those things, I would actually shout out and say, Nathan, what are you doing? Can't you see there's no electricity? Can't you go and take up the lighter or take up the matchstick or take up or, or put on the stove and get the candles going? Because now you are 17, now you are 18 years old. And there are certain things that certain times, certain people can handle that they can't handle before. And therefore God says, wait, because I have a season and time for those things to be fulfilled. But until that season comes, wait. Of late, I've been experiencing yet another way by which God answers. And it's one of the toughest things to process when he answers with silence. I never used to understand silence. You're praying, but you're not having any answer. It's almost like you're begging. Say yes or no, I will accept it. Say wait, I will accept it. But then there is a silence that God brings about as an answer. Of late I've been understanding when it's silence, it's exciting. Because God is saying, hey, strap up your seat belts because I'm taking you on a journey. I'm taking you on a journey that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has ever conceived because I am going to do fabulous things. I'm going to do extravagant things. I'm going to do supernatural things and I want to show you and I want to show off 
And therefore, put on your seatbelt and come on this journey, my son, because I am doing something new in your life that you can't fully fathom, that you can't fully understand, that your mind cannot stretch enough because our mind is so limited. He's working here, he's working there, he's working the life of this person, he's working in nation and nations, he's preparing your heart and he is going to do fantastic things. And therefore, when God is silent, never underestimate for no. When God is silent, he's saying, come on a journey, my son. I want to do something beautiful in your life and how many of you believe that God is a God who answers and because he's a God who answers he is wanting us to ask I want you to turn your attention to a passage of scripture in John chapter 14 and verse 13 and 14 that gives me confidence to ask him anything and everything John chapter 13 sorry John chapter 14 and verses 13 and 14. Can we project it please? John chapter 14 and verses 13 and 14. Can we all read it together? And I, come on everybody. Come on, this is not enough. Everybody, do you have a voice? Did you bring your voice this morning? Okay, did you bring your voice this morning? If you brought your voice this morning, would you lift up your voices and let's read together. And I will do whatever you ask in my name. So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. You can ask me for what? Come on, come on. Ask me for? Ask me for what? And therefore, therefore, you can ask Him for absolutely anything. But you need to be a little bit cautious about asking. Because there's a context to this anything. And the context to anything is that this asking is to glorify the Father. Everyone say glorify the Father. Okay, lift up your hands and say it must glorify. Me asking must what? It must what? Glorify the Father. That's all. He must glorify the Father. Which means I can't ask anything that defames His name. I can't ask anything that defames His name. I can't ask anything that's evil because my father is a good, good father. And that boy, everything about him is absolutely good. And he can't do anything that's evil. And therefore, I can't ask God, do something evil. Kill this person. No. Let this person be put down so that I can be put up. No. Oh, he does not know you so. No. He can't do anything evil. In the context is, I can't defame his name by my asking. I can't ask for anything that's evil. Thirdly, I can't ask anything against his will and plan. Which means, like sometimes we're so worried about uh, his will. Should I actually eat Pani Puri or not? That's, that, that, please, if you want to eat Pani Puri, eat. God is not really worried about His will. Sometimes we have made His will so much in human terms. His will, His plan, His pleasure are, are hey, His will, His plan, His pleasure is that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God is made known to the rulers and authorities of the heavenly realms. Which means like, hey, there's no other plan for Christ. The plan for Christ is the church. There's no other salvation plan but by Jesus Christ and anyone who believes that Jesus came, he died, he rose. Hey, these are the plans, the, the purposes, the pleasures of God. And these plans, purposes and pleasures of God given in the scriptures cannot be And therefore, I can't ask anything apart from his will, plan, and pleasure. This is the major will, plan, and pleasure of God. And fourthly, I can't ask anything with any wrong motive. For the word of God says in James and chapter 4 and verse 3, when you ask, can we all read it together? When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with what? 
wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. If it's all about you and your pleasures, no, 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 don't ask. That's wrong motives and you will not receive because you, if you, even if you ask with wrong motives for your own pleasure, for your own selfish sake, then no. These are the only four aspects. Hey, one, I can't defame his name. Two, I can't ask anything that will be evil. Number three, I can't ask anything from the major plans, purposes of God, the will of God that has been in the scriptures. Number four, I can't ask for anything with the wrong motives. If it's apart from this, anything, come on, turn to someone and say anything. Come on, shout it out, anything. Come on, open up your mouth and say anything. Just ask. Ask. Because the word of God says, you do not receive because you do not ask. But my father knows everything that I need even before one of my, one of it comes from my mouth through. That's the word of God because he knows. But the word of God says, ask. Come on, turn to someone and say, just all that the Spirit of God is saying this morning is like, hey, I want to see your prayer list. I've not seen that. Because of late, this is what I've been doing. Putting down a prayer list and it's not filled with things for me. It's filled with things for others and I've seen God tick mark everything that I've written down. Everything. Simple, simple things to complex things. Everything that you put down, He answers. He answers. Because we don't ask, we don't receive. Because we don't put down a list, we don't even know that He has answered us. Now that I've started this new practice, I'm able to see everything that you put down and everything that you ask, He does it. You ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the doors will be open. Ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. For what you ask, you will receive. What you seek will be found. What you knock, that door will be flung open in the name of Jesus. And therefore, all that the Spirit of God is saying this morning to the church of Jesus Christ, would you ask? Why do we ask? Uh, three things that I want to say. Why ask? Okay, ask because of. Then I want to say, ask with or ask in and ask for. These are my three points, okay? So these are the major, major framework of, on, which, on which we're going we're gonna to seat the word this morning, okay? We're going to ask because. We ask in or ask with. And then we are going to say, ask for what we need to ask for. Is that okay? So why do we ask or ask because? We ask because we have a good, good father. If as an as a evil father, with, you know that you're not a good father. If you know what to do for your own children. That's Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Okay, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. Let's go to that passage. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 11. If you then though who you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who are... He's absolutely a good, good father. He's not like an Indian father, right? He's, he's, he's not like our Indian fathers. And most of the times we don't even process. The, the greatest challenge for Indians is that most of, us are, most of us couldn't approach our fathers. We always went through Mother Mary, right? We went through Mother Mary. And that's why Roman Catholicism is very attractive for us because it's the same thing. If you want to go to the father, go through the Mother Mary, right? Because that's what we practice in our homes. We actually go and say something to the mother. 
and the mother knows what to share and what not to share okay and she knows she filters she's the filter okay and she filters everything out and she goes and in bits and pieces she will share first day she'll share our son second day she'll share there is excursion in the school they are going for third day she'll share 1500 rupees is needed on the fourth day she'll share you know what i have 500 underneath the clothes you can give only 1000 rupees and then somehow some way she will do something and then the father will answer not directly right he will not say while he is he is wiping after his bath he is wiping his his back and he'll shout something to the mother that time we have to understand that we can go for excursion or not that's the problem of that that's at least indian because you have a father at home at the west you don't even have a father that's that's the challenge there's a fatherless generation in the west there's a non communicative father in the east but we have a skewed understanding of who a father is but if you go to the scripture this father hears this father speaks and he is all good is all good in him there's no evil in him there is absolutely nothing bad sometimes we ask maybe i have done something because our framework is like that our religious framework is like i've done something wrong and that's why i'm going through something like this and god has punished me listen to this very carefully you you that's not the framework of your father your father is not looking out for what and how i can punish no he is compassionate everyone say compassionate i know he disciplines because we love he loves and therefore he disciplines absolutely absolutely but he is not looking for when he can punish you that's not your father that's religion that's religion your father is not looking how he can punish you he is a compassionate gracious father who disciplines us because he loves us he even his discipline is not because he is angry and upset no he is disciplining his children because he loves you have a good good father and that's why i would ask secondly this god does immeasurably more than what we can ask or imagine ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 these are passages of scriptures that really needs to be imbibed in your heart and and, and hey now unto him everybody reading together now unto him who is able to do immeasurably more than all that we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us this power is working within his church uh, together with saints the, the length the breadth the height the depth can be accessed about his love this father is a, a father of love this father is a father of the of the whole family that bows down its knees towards him and he says now he is able to do immeasurably everyone say immeasurably more than all that you can ask or so when you start to ask him he, he does not do what you are asking he does immeasurably more than all that you ask or imagine and sometimes he, he you have not even asked and you imagine some things and that's in your thoughts and he grabs those thoughts and he says you have my you have these thoughts my son you have these thoughts my daughters i will begin to do immeasurably more and what you ask or imagine number 3 romans chapter 8 and verse 28 says that all things come on everyone lifting up your hands and everyone actually going around okay L- lift up your hands and circle it your hands about and say all things work together for good for those who love god all things in fact life is ups and downs twists and turns life is sometimes good bad and ugly but this is what you need to know why we ask <coughs> because we have a father who does all 
things they work together for good everything works together sometimes even the worst things will turn around everyone everything is possible come on turn to someone say everything is possible and all things work together for good for those who love him all that we got to do is to love god fourthly psalm chapter 37 and verse 4 it says delight yourself Delight yourself in the Lord and he will grant the desires of your heart. The deep, deep desires of your heart. Kutti, kutti desires of your heart. Small, small, little, little. He's a father who, who loves to see what we need. He will. Delight yourself. All that he's asking us to, hey, bask in my presence. Be with me. Talk about how good I am. Just delight. Just be joyful in me, right? Why are you always sad? Be joyful in me. Love. Come into my presence. Enjoy my presence. Delight yourself in my presence. And I will grant you the deep desires of your heart. Fifthly, why? Why, why would I ask? Is because the word of God says that he will grant unto me everything for my enjoyment. This is my father. When Paul is talking to Timothy, son, who is in Ephesus. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. And let's read First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Everybody reading together. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be what? Arrogant. Not to put their hope in wealth which is so uncertain but to put their hope in this good good father right to put your hope in this good good father who does immeasurably more than all that you can ask or imagine you got to put your a full full hope in this father because all things work together for good and he actually takes care of the deep desires of your heart this good good father put your hope in him and what happens when you put your hope in him put your hope in god who richly provides us with what everything for our this father is a father who looks into your enjoyment he looks out hey this is what my son enjoys granted unto him it's not like our Indian fathers huh? I'm sorry, on Father's Day, I'll speak good things about our fathers. He does not look into what can we do to irritate our sons and daughters. No, that's sometimes I don't know why that comes into our, into like find something and irritate the children. No, that's why the scriptures talk about how the fathers, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4 talks about how fathers do not what? That's not what mothers do. Mothers always cuddle. Mothers always talk uh, um, like very lovingly. Mothers always really encourage. Mothers do that. But I don't know what happens to the fathers. Fathers always find something to. This father is not that. He looks out for our enjoyment. And he grants that enjoyment. I mean, that's who your father is. And that's the reason why we must what? Just what? Ask. Come on, turn, turn to someone and say, just ask. Just ask. Is it okay to give a high five to someone and say, just ask? Okay, just, well, I don't know how, um, you, you don't know how to give high five. Okay, every, everyone learn how to give high fives. Is it okay? It's okay. Just ask. Ask with, ask in faith. Because that's the key. Ask in faith. There were two blind men who came to Jesus. And Jesus is asking them, hey, do you believe? And they said, yes, I believe. Seeing their faith, Jesus healed the blind men. There was this father who had a son who was demon possessed. And, and he brought them to the disciples and said, disciples do something. The disciples couldn't do anything. And Jesus walked by and asked them what was happening. And looking at their unbelief in the eyes of the disciples, asked this father, do you believe? Only believe. All things are possible. Turn to someone and say, only believe. 
Only believe. The secret is faith. The secret is actually believing that with them all things are possible. All things. Everything is possible. And in that faith, He will begin to answer you. Everything is possible. Everything is possible. Everything, everything, everything. And as you continue to, to believe in Him, miracles begin to happen. The things that you ask for are beginning to happen in your life. Secondly, you ask with shameless audacity. Shameless audacity. This is your father's. Uh, what is going to go wrong in your asking? The maximum is going to say is what? No. And that no is going to be good, right? Maximum is going to say wait. And the waiting is good, right? Maximum he'll do is to change your heart and renew your mind to understand his heart. So ask. Ask with shameless audacity. And that's what the, the Phoenician woman who comes from, from, from Syria area, it, she was a Gentile and she knew very well that the bread of healing belongs to the Israelites and she knew very well that, that, that Jesus was sent to the lost of Israel. And she goes to Jesus and says, my, my, my daughter is suffering with demon possession and she needs to be delivered. And Jesus says, listen, the bread of healing only belongs to the children, which basically means, hey, it belongs to the nation of Israel. I came to the nation of Israel. They are the covenant people of God. Hey, this is not the season for Gentiles. But she says, you know what? But even dogs. Because in the Jewish community, they, they considered the Gentiles nothing. Uh, sometimes even as dogs. And she says, you know what? The dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the master's table. Can I have crumbs, Jesus? Shameless audacity. Going and asking for crumbs. God is okay. If you don't give me the main, give me the crumbs. Shameless audacity, going and asking. That is what the Spirit of God is saying. Hey, why are you not asking? Why have you not put down the list? I have not seen your prayer list for long. This is a contention that, the, that God has with this church. He's saying, where is your prayer list? Where is your prayer list? I've not seen your prayer list. I'm not able to answer because you're not even asking. Ask with shameless audacity. She asked, God, if dogs can eat out of the crumbs that fall from the master's table, can I have crumbs? This morning, sometimes we need to come and ask, God, it's okay, give me crumbs. He'll say, no. I can't give crumbs. Crumbs are for dogs. I'll give you bread, my son. I'll give you bread, my daughter. I'll give you more than all, all that you can ask or imagine. I will work all things together for good. Ask with perseverance. Ask with faith. Ask with shameless audacity and ask with perseverance. And that's what Elijah did when there was no rains for three years. He went and bent down his knees, put his head in between his knees and he asked, send rains. The first time it didn't happen. He asked a second, he asked a third, he asked a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. And then there was a cloud in the shape of a man's hands that rose. He said, rains are coming. Prayers of the righteous man will. Yes, a righteous man may fail, but the prayers of the righteous man, they will never fail. And you're saying, God, I'm not righteous, but it's not because of your righteousness, it's because of God is clothing his righteousness over you. 
all is that you orientation god i want to be right before you will you help me be right before you he will answer your prayers this morning because you ask with faith you ask with shameless audacity and you ask you ask with perseverance finally this morning ask for what should you ask for you should ask that every form of pain in your life must be removed because i want you to know that the father does not want to see you in pain every form of bodily pain every form of emotional pain every form of mental pain that you have been going through every form of agony that you are going through god says i want to cease it in your life and i want you to ask pain to be removed from your life sometimes you're going through pain that is totally unnecessary totally unfounded totally irrational and therefore you're just taking that pain all over in your in yourself and continuously keep bothering about rather than actually going through that pain and and suffering come into the feet of Jesus and say god this is the pain that i'm going through will you remove this pain god supernaturally miraculously will remove that pain and that's what jabez did that's what jabez did first chronicles in chapter 4 and was 9 and 10 can we all read it together because when jabez was born his mother saw jabez she was in extreme pain and said jabez you're a pain jabez was more honorable than his brothers why his mother had named him jabez saying i gave birth to him in pain and therefore he she declared over his life you're a pain jabez that's what he meant jabez pain but then jabez said i can't I can't be called pain any longer because I'm not designed to be uh, that's not my destiny pain is not my destiny pain is not what I want to carry on all through the days of my life and he cried out to the god of israel can we all cry out together everyone say this prayer together oh come on everyone oh that you would what bless me enlarge my territory let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from what Come on everyone declare I will be free from pain and God granted his request So I want you to lift up your hands and pray this prayer God let the pain in my life cease And he will remove that pain from your life Every sickness is of you. You got to pray that every sickness in your body must be removed. I don't know why some people get so excited when they are sick. They continue to talk I I don't know is it because of attention. They say hey you know what I I I am uh, this is my sickness. Stop. There's nothing great about the sickness that you have. You got to be healed in Jesus name. Amen. Don't keep entertaining the sickness. Don't keep harping about your sickness. Don't, don't keep don't seek attention because of your sickness that sickness must be cast out in Jesus name amen that cancer must be cast out in Jesus name that blood pressure must be cast out in Jesus name that sugar diabetes must be cast out in Jesus name the cholesterol must go down in Jesus name every aches and pain must leave your body in Jesus name and therefore you got to ask for pain to be removed from your life you must ask the sickness be removed from your life you must ask for peace to come upon your families number 3 peace why should you suffer peacelessness inside family pray for peace ask for peace this god of peace will soon crush satan this god of peace will soon crush satan underneath your feet number 4 ask for daily bread for your needs ask him ask him for your daily bread for your needs for certain things for children's education for finances our father we ask five ask that that the nation will be ruled by the right people ask the word of god is asking us to ask him ask for chief minister ask for uh, governors ask for prime minister ask ask
Sixthly, ask for nations, ask for souls, ask for ethnos, for ethnic people. God, I want Spain, I want Uganda. Give me Somalia. Give me Congo. Give me the entire continent of South America. Hey, ask and you will be granted. Because this is the right of sons and daughters. This is the inheritance of sons and daughters. Ask of me and I'll give you nations. I've been asking for nations. And God has been giving nations. Ask. Ask that pain be removed. Ask for sicknesses to be gone. Ask for peace within the family. Ask. Just ask. For daily needs, He will supply. Much more, much more, much more. Ask for governors. Ask for nations. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sins, we pray. Come on, everyone together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. cry oh lord we need your mercy and we need your grace today hear us as we pray once again hear our cry oh lord we need your mercy and we need your grace today hear us Once again, hear our cry, hear our cry. Oh Lord, we need your mercy and we need your grace today. Hear us as lift up your hands and say, Our Father, our Are many this morning, but he's answering. He's answering from heaven. He answers everyone together. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father. Stand up to our feet, everyone. Holy is the Lord. Every hand's lifted up and singing. Holy is the Lord. Holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy.
Father. All that the Spirit of God is saying, ask, no? Hey, is there anything wrong in you asking? Why are you not asking me? Ask for your children. As mothers, plead for your children. Ask things for your children. Ask for your parents. Ask for your brother. Ask for your sister. Sometimes you don't even need to ask for yourself, right? You can ask for another. So this morning, I want you to take your phone because I know that you don't have pen and paper. Most of you will not have. So take your phone and I want you to ask. Put down. Put down. And ask. Father, I ask for put down at least one. Put down. Done. Maybe it's one, maybe it's two, maybe it's three, I don't know. Maybe you have a pen and paper, but wherever you've written, maybe it's on your notes, maybe it's on your WhatsApp, or whatever you've put down, would you lift it up to the Father and say, Father, Abba, Abba, whatever you want to call him, if he's given us this right to call him, Abba, Abba, this is my request. In your purview, in your will, in your pleasure, we ask. According to your will, your plan, your pleasure. According to your goodness, according to your mercy, according to your compassion. That you look to David and say, hey David, you know what? Instead of making this mistake, David, you could have asked me. Wouldn't I have done? Have I not done? I'm not, have I, I've given you my, your master's possession. I've done you many things. Don't take things in your own hands and do things in your own will and in your own pleasure and, and be at fault. Just ask me, no? I know how to work things for you. Don't take things in your own hands and mess it up. Ask me and I will grant unto you. In my own way, in my own way, I will lead you, I will guide you, I will, I, I will shape things for you. So Father, we lift up these prayer lists. And Lord, all that you're asking us to is put down the prayer list and ask and you will grant. And everyone said, Amen. All of God's saints said, Come on everyone, lift up your voices and say, Amen. Come on everyone, say, Amen. Just give the Lord a big hand of praise this morning and thank God. Our sins, we pray. Our Father, once again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sins. Pray.
lift up your voice and sing our father our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name our father hear us from heaven, from heaven. forgive our sins we pray forgive our sins we pray forgive our sins we pray, we pray. you may be seated in god's presence is there anybody who's come here for the very first time you say this is my first time visit to new life assemblies of god english service would you slip up your hands wherever you are thank you thank you my brother is there anybody else i see one more brother behind can i ask you to stand to your feet we just want to welcome you and pray for you would you please do that thank you for doing it oh i see more people thank you thank you uncle and auntie Ah, uh, she's coming to you with a with a form. Would you take it and fill it up and give it to us? We would pray for you. And if you are in the city and if you have no other church that you are part of, please be part of our church. In fact, our Sunday services are not the only times we gather together. We gather together in 50 other homes across the city, and we want you to be part of these homes because that's where real church happens. and so we want you to be fellowshipping with and we want you to grow together as disciples of Christ let's lift up our hands and pray for these precious people father we pray and bless them lord even as they ask grant them their needs meet them at the point of their need and lift them up father this day lift them up when they leave this place i pray that you will minister to them and lift them up let them be part of the body of Christ blessings and your peace in jesus name we pray Amen. You may be seated. Let's all lift our hands and pronounce God's blessings together. Now may the grace of God the Father, the love of his only son Jesus, the sweet fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest and abide with us now and forever. And all God's saints said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic week. Shake someone's hands and put down the list because that's what the spirit of God wants. Put down a list and ask and see how God fulfills everything that you have put down on your list because he's a prayer answering God. God bless you. Amen. Amen.